our next wave of ethereal workshop monsters are on the way. Along with a bunch more things for extravaganza, including as lo and behold, Blabbit inside of Donafay and other things. So let's have a look at what on earth is coming inside of extravaganza this year. So first off, we've got to move everything aside, okay? <laughs> talk about the next ethereal workshop wave because that's where everyone is concerned right now inside of ethereal workshop with four out of all those waves actually now we have two monsters coming each wave and we actually have five ethereal monsters left now we have two triples and the three quads that we have on screen as well and of course as quinn we're not forgetting about that and if we're getting two every wave we're on to all right <laughs> there's another mount that does make sense that we might be seeing as quint inside of the final wave as well now for as ethereals we've been seeing them in difficulty order based on how unstable they are inside of the synthesizer so based on this we do know as well that our next triple as we are getting a triple and quad the next wave is going to be the shadow crystal and poison triple the second to last one inside of wave four and for his quad elemental as well we know that it's going to be the plasma shadow crystal and poison quad but we also know it is going to be based on an element every single quad that we've had so far has been based on one like Vention was based on Meg and Whale rather quite elusively this one was based on Plasma. With Vention it was quite the surprise but this time we, we can work out which one it's gonna be based on this time but don't worry. If we look at the ethereal release windows we had Ghast which came first representing Plasma, Rebro Mech, then Grumpire Shadow. So actually they are releasing in the order that the original single elementals released in so that means that the Shadow quad is going to be coming up next and if that isn't solidified proof enough for you if we go on over to a sale currently in game two grumpire is 50 percent off we know now it is going to be the shadow quad and far as shadow quad i want to go back to my original theories a bit here and play to that a little bit my biggest hope behind that especially since i've seen snow queen nova's prediction is absolutely that this quad should be creepy and horror themed if they delve into that nightmare styling once more Oh, people love that thing. I mean, personally, I didn't really get it. <laughs> I don't really play horror games, but people love that thing. They love horror games. Everyone plays for now, except me, apparently. I know nothing about it, <laughs> but everyone loves it, and I feel like they would love so much from MSM to see a horror-themed monster. Just one. Give us at least one. I would love to see this. I feel like this is a big gap inside of the game, and I have no doubt everyone inside of the community would love it, and just seeing how the MSM style could remain intact, too, in between this horror theming and the design style, too, would be really interesting and take it in a new stride which would be really awesome to see. The female quads as well, they're supposed to be really unstable so a less pieced together monster representing this horror styleness, it definitely makes a lot of sense for the quads as well if we're thinking about them. And going back to my theories, like I said I want to go back to them a little bit for the shadow quad because we did predict by it last time. I absolutely think they should play into the obscurity element behind this monster make it a huge surprise and hide its features Wait, I feel like that is the guaranteed thing you have to have. Have those features hidden away. A face, his body, dangle them all underneath a cloak or something and reveal it inside of his animations. It's supposed to be creepy, shadow themed. Really play into that with this monster. I suppose it's arms and his face inside of his animations. Give us something to scream about. <laughs> I, I maybe not scream, scream, scream. <laughs> But give us a friendly or a gob. Give me a surprise. The horror style, it just overall lends itself too well towards this surprise element, I think, to pass up on this opportunity. And I also think with Workshop 2, we are going to see one final vocalist. I feel like there is still room for one additional one. And as these waves keep progressing and getting better, because as we approach the end of the island, monsters usually tend to get better towards the end. And therefore, with that expectation in mind, I feel like a vocalist coming now might make the most sense so really impactful instruments if we are to get some of those can come in these later waves and therefore i feel like this vocalist might come inside of wave four and with places like inside of pit Plash's section and all of the verses after whales part it feels like an additional vocalist could be coming and i see the shadow quad being the perfect monster to fulfill that vocalist role i've put all these instruments forward like erdy gurdy and Feramin, but these past few waves as well 
they have cemented the idea that Workshop lends itself towards these more abstract instruments. Invention, oh my god, that was absolutely incredible how it combined its mech element along with the Workshop vibe as well. That was just a perfect match, okay? And with the rest of the monsters, I feel like we're going to be seeing that too. Flask, these unique sounds, potion bottles are gliding amongst one another. You just never expect it. And a saw going in between Vention's mouth. It's just absolutely insane, these ideas that they come up with to fit that factory setting. And I absolutely think those ideas are going to continue. And actually, I only feel like they're going to get better as we keep approaching the final wave too. <laughs> Therefore, with a shadow quad, even though I think it might be a vocalist, let's go back to that abstractness behind it and see how we can go about incorporating that inside of this vocalist too, I was thinking. So I was thinking we could do it with whisper like sounds to mimic the horror based theming with heavy reverb and echo to communicate that workshop style in too, to contrast as well with those heavy vocals, have this whispering part. It feels like it would lend itself so much the horror theme into it too. And maybe some silence moments I was thinking inside of it, rather sporadic, make it feel very unknown what it's going to do and how it's going to play to lend itself towards that horror vibe. And especially as well to incorporate this horror theme in, but staying true to the workshop style. I came up with some ideas as well for just instrument wise, what this horror based monster could do, because honestly, I'm putting all my ideas on the table today. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I feel like it could be a vocalist. I feel like maybe flickering lights would be really cool because obviously it's a workshop. You'd see some of that and the horror theming as well coming into this. But the unstable energy as well and it working in tandem to reveal itself. Imagine light flickering noises coming in when you hear the monster and see its face or whatever. That obscurity element and this could play into each other so well. And I was thinking maybe footsteps. You think of running away inside of horror games or whatever. So having that percussion sound could be really cool as well and mimic people working amongst the workshop. <laughs> but steps two could really help amp up Whale's part as that has such a huge escalation but it needs a little bit more and footsteps or some kind of build up towards that tension could escalate that so well and this maybe lends itself a bit more to it. <laughs> Vents too. Vents. Oh my goodness. Full horror theme in here. Shadows, they're supposed to be unseen. So, and you often adventure inside of vents in horror games, right? I, I, I honestly don't know. I'm making this stuff up on the spot, maybe. But I feel like incorporating these in low swirling air sounds inside of the song would be quite a cool idea as well. These abstract ideas for the Shadow Boss, though, I think they are so extraordinary. And it gets me so excited. I feel like the opportunities for the Shadow one in particular, when I think about them, are so extraordinary. Vengeance truly opened the ballpark for these instruments now in my mind. And it just brings to life all these insane ideas inside of my head. It's, it's insane. My mind is honestly racing. Anyway, as I've been going on about the quad, let's go back to the triple for a bit. So I've been longing for a heavy instrument, like what Vention provided inside of the song. And I went over instruments like the theremin and the hurdy-gurdy inside of my theories last time. And I really would like to see something like that and therefore with the triple I'm super hopeful that we get some kind of heavy instrument as well to really tide us over inside of this wave. Honestly this wave is looking really powerful and good already but I just love this idea of having a really weird vocalist to combine with a heavy instrument. This could be so cool. <laughs> I'm so obsessed. And besides his instruments too I feel like it's important to bring up Whale's part. Oh my god I need this part to come. I am spoiling myself to death. I'll go on live streams. I'll be chilling out with you guys and then the time will just come on or I'll be reacting to something. I just need it to release so I can finally put my efforts to rest. <laughs> okay. I generally feel like I am going to listen to it in whole at one point. Apparently, I sat through the whole thing. It was that quiet. I didn't notice it inside of what one of my fan made reactions. But it was there. It was playing. Thank God I didn't hear it. I'm not going back and looking if I did. You guys can go and do that. But I'm fed up of trying to storm away from it. Just please release the track. Okay. <laughs> For my sake, above anyone else's. Everyone else is listening to it in bliss, but I, I, I just want to hear it in game for itself. I've heard the first little bit of it, though, and I must say, this track is so powerful from the little bit what I've heard, and I can absolutely tell where this is going. It is going at the end of the song, and it's going to lend itself towards more of a mythical island ending style, isn't it? Just like what we have with the finale verse there, which absolutely is my favourite verse inside of the game, and I have no doubt it's going to do some of the amazing things on Workshop, this track. It sounds absolutely... Absolutely extraordinary. I must say, though, 
just from the little glimmer of the sound I've heard, it also sounds so different above Mythical as well. It's changed. It's so drastic to the rest of the song. Going back to my little bit what I've heard, I feel like this is going to be unlike anything we have seen from MSM so far. It truly feels like an emotional staple and as though it's going to really make the workshop song change in a whole different direction. And with that in mind, I must say, I do feel like we are going to see an exclusive monster potentially play inside of that verse just based on how drastic different it is from that song. I feel like getting a piplash there or something to compensate for this verse being quite different would really help this verse come forward. And then for, for when this verse is going to arrive, I feel like it is more so based on A, when we have enough monsters from the verse to actually have it inside of the game and B, if this monster is going to come inside of this wave or whenever wave it is coming, this exclusive monster inside of that verse, because I, I genuinely don't think they can captivate on that verse enough without having an exclusive monster there. When Whenever that monster does come, then obviously that verse is going to have to come as well. So it's just down to those two intricate parts there. Whichever one lands itself first, I think that is when we are going to see this verse come forward. I desperately need it. <laughs> Man, I desperately need to. It sounds so good. I just want to listen to the track again. Okay? <laughs> Give it me. <laughs> For his wonderful triple before MPG gets carried away because he wants the battle track so bad. <laughs> Let's have a look at Venus snaps from Rouse here. One of his triple elements. So this is the Shadow crystal and poison one which we are going to be getting inside of this wave and i must say the escalation inside of the instability you can really see it inside of here this is something i'm really excited as well as we keep going with these waves we're going to get even more unstable and more epic instrument wise it's only going to get better and looking at the top here we can see the shadow crystal and poison elements indented on the mouse behind this interestingly we've got a vocalist here i absolutely do think we might be seeing a vocalist this with hopefully i've been right pretty much about whether we're getting instruments of Oakley so far with ways, <laughs> but we'll see if that continues, won't we? This one, I love its little belly and its little arms. It's honestly quite cute. I don't know whether I should be saying it's cute. <laughs> I think my definition of cute is somewhere else entirely based on you guys' comments. I don't know. <laughs> right, anyway, people submitted some free ideas as well because with the triple elementals that we've been seeing, we've been getting free of something like with Venus snaps here, they have free mouths. So people put forward some ideas last theory video and I said I'll feature some, so I'm going to do just that. People put forward the idea of it having free instruments. I found this idea from this person really inventive. How that could be conveyed though is something else entirely man <laughs> i'm not sure about that we have free wings i thought that was really cool for the instability aspect because we often only have two wings so seeing free would be quite an oddball decision and convey that instability a lot more and free is that's just for cuteness i need that <laughs> i love my cute monsters but we're going horror theme this time just to make it clear free bodies is my idea i've been bringing it up every single time i need free bodies i feel like it would be really cool to see free monsters in Tannum, like your whimsies or your den shoes, just three monsters together. We've not really had anything like that. It feels like it could be really cool. So I'm really hopeful that we might get something like that. And speaking of the Shadow Quad 2, I want to bring up Snarl Queen from Nova. I reacted to this thing and my god, this is so cool. I must say, this is exactly what the Shadow Quad needs to be like. Scary, horror themed, really captivate on that vibe. I'm not settling for anything less for this Shadow Quad and I will be disappointed if it is not horror theme because this has so much opportunity. So all Queen, you can see they have a jester-like hat on top of them. They have a jukebox inside of the middle, which I must say its sound is absolutely so cool. I love the medicine vibe behind it. Even the feet. I haven't thought it. I love the dongles too with its legs. It's like it's playing from the jukebox itself inside of the center. It's just so creative and I love it so much. I would generally settle on this being the Shadow Quad 2. It's so cool and this is exactly the kind of thing that we need from the Shadow Quad to really embrace that horror theme in with this. And now, going back to non effects, we brought that up inside of his intro too. It's on the way extravaganza, so of course, we're getting baby blabbits. Now, baby rabbits, I've got to say, online, I looked at the pictures of them, and they are so cute. <laughs> so, I'm really hopeful that Blabby is a bit ugly inside of the main game, but maybe inside of its baby form, it could be really cute. This could, has the opportunity to be the most cutest seasonal baby monster and I need it. <laughs> 
seen a design with less developed stuck up ears would be really cute but i was also thinking he could have dumbo ears one of those two i, I would love the dumbo ears honestly <laughs> It's just cuteness overload. Please make it a really cute styled blabbit. You could have a little snow to look at these baby rabbit photos. I mean, just look at the pictures here, okay? <laughs> this is so cute. I would need this. <laughs> Now, the tail too. I think that is where the most interesting part behind this is going to come in because baby rabbits, they don't really seem to have even a tail up. <laughs> it's a really underdeveloped. <laughs> And just in general with this too, I think seeing as though we're going to be playing into Blabbit's origins here, I feel like the most specific design point is contrasting the tail out and making it look less developed, whatever form that might take. You could even make it look completely different to its original, I think, with the tail. That's going to be the most interesting part, but just please with Baby Blabbit too, make it just stand up, okay? I really hope that the feet are intact. It's stood up still. Lots of the monsters like to sit down, not do much. Baby Blabbit, you sit up and you jump like a rabbit should do god bless it it's only a baby but I, I hope for that and i hope that it actually follows through like baby smoochle did as it flew inside of the continent animations and brought out a lot of life honestly perhaps the most life we've seen inside of the baby monsters definitely one of the most lively anyway speaking of baby smoochle smoochle that absolutely criminal monster it stole stole the part right from under his noses yeah noses for blubby <laughs> It stole throughout from under his noses this part where Blabbit should have played. It should have gone where Smoochel went. That's my opinion. Smoochel, I, I don't care. You, you, you're a disgrace. You ruined that part of the content song. Your design, animation, we love it. But I don't have a clue what that sound is doing. It's got too many effects on it. <laughs> And therefore, I hope that definitely does not happen again. I've never seen anything really happen like that before. It just ruins that part of the song. Anyway, regardless, Blabbit, you need to do a role reversal, therefore. Seeing as the Smoochel, I really wanted to go at the end, and it went where Blabbit should. Blabbit, you need to go where Smoochel didn't and do what Smoochel just didn't. <laughs> Blabbit, it needs to do more than it's ever done before. Seeing as we get this role reversal, I had it that way in my mind because I felt like that was the most natural way to do it. But Blabbit, therefore, really needs to play much more melodically and be much more methodical than it ever has been to be able to fulfill this verse. We've only got four monsters left now. Gnolls, Bowhead, Blabbit, and Pooler. And out of these four, it feels like Blabbit is going to be one of them to go in the end. And therefore, I'm really hopeful that Blabbit can provide something meaningful here. This part, it really needs filling out much more than the rest of the song. Dun, 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 really dun, dun. No. This part is so lacking in comparison to the rest of the song. It doesn't act as much monsters to fill it out. And therefore, Blabbit, I feel like, could do that. It needs to be much more musical than it ever really has been to help push this part forward to bring it as lively as the rest of the song. And now, though, we're going to look at Rouse's design behind Blabby's. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've not actually looked at this Rouse's <laughs> We've got a massive belly <laughs> Oh, it's so cute though. I don't know though. <laughs> okay, I've lost. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This was honestly not what I was expecting. Anyway, Rouse has come up with Blabbit here. It's got a gold tooth, a large belly. We've got some poofy cheeks here. We have the tail, which is sitting on rather lavishly here, and ears. I'm really hopeful that they either play into the ears being much more Dumbo themed or stood up, like I mentioned before. But really cute sound here from Rouse. Please stand up, though. Please, Blabbit. I need you to stand up. That is a re direct request. And with Blabbit 2, I feel like we are going to be getting something else. And that is actually as next. Quint. I feel like it is time for us to finally see as Quint come to Dawn of Fire as well as next one. And with that, who is better for extravaganza than as water? Quint. Of course, Bowhead. You're saving Nolls for later. We know that. <laughs> so let's get on with Bowhead, shall we? I talked very in-depth about this inside of my Quint's theory video, so make sure to go and check that out over here. But I feel like Bowhead, it really needs to give that final push for Dawn of Fire that these outer islands really need. Bowhead is a massive instrument, and it can really lavish out these islands in ways which other monsters certainly can't. And this is the second to final monster that is going to be going to the Outer Islands as well. So with that in mind, I want Bowhead not to just go to one island like I brought up last time, but I want it to go to two 
islands. And that actually never happens. It's not happened for years, but Bowhead, you need to do it. If you are the second to last one, this has to be the monster that goes to two. Hoy Island and Space Island need Bowhead. Hoy Island it is the least liked island inside of the community. The community just does not like Party Island, and I see why it doesn't really have much going for it. It's definitely not the most lively song, let's say, and I even forgot about its existence once when I was playing the game and I nicknamed it my least favourite island. I just forgot it existed. <laughs> I actually think that's really bad. <laughs> anyway, Party Island, if we just had one monster go there, the community would be in the law because they just don't like Party Island. But here's the thing. If it goes to both islands, we just get the best of both worlds. Bowhead could do wonders for Party Island. Paint that fresh coat of paint that Party Island really needs. It's just so bare bones. And Bowhead, it provided so much to Psychic Island. And it's doing just even a little bit of that over here. It's, it's going to make such an impact. It's going to be insane. It's just the idea of it playing through the whole Party Island song and giving it that bit of momentum to when Candelavra plays and Quarister and making those bits feel epic like they should be, it, it could give that twist on the knob that this song really needs. And Space Island, oh my god, Bowhead is made for that island. You can hear it already playing inside of the song and all of these wondrous parts that you can add in that final verse to inside of Space Island. That needs something right now. <laughs> Is again such a bare bones part, a bit like the end of the continent, but Bowhead playing there. That could absolutely fill that bit out immensely. You can literally hear it on Space Island. I don't even need it to come. It's made for Space Island, so it has to come there too. And if you want to check out my continent predictions, make sure to go and check out my Quint theory video, which I mentioned earlier. But for now, let's have a look at Bowhead's baby design from Rouse. Rouse has put together this immensely cute design. I love it so much. It's levitating. I love it. I I'm really hopeful that they do something quite unique with the hair. And I'm intrigued to, to see what they do with the chin. Rouse has just extinguished the chin, but that is a really interesting thing for me to see what happens with this design, but definitely really cool. And I'm also trying to get over that Rouse made me think that adult bowhead actually arrived when he hadn't. <laughs> the texture work here was really cool on the adult form as well. And with us approaching a new month, we have a new celestial on the way too, and that is Adult Blossom. Adult Glacier, it stepped in with the set of the teens. You live young. <laughs> okay, we're not just saying the Yars is side of another favorite video MPG. Get it together. <laughs> in my opinion, we've had this teen vibe, but more so with Blossom, I think back to the differences between the young and adult form. The differences are so minute, it's absolutely unreal. And I feel like if we are to see this adult form take its own animations and be unique, it's got to have at least one drastically unique feature, I feel because it's just too similar, I feel like, otherwise. If not, it's not going to really have anything to really play around with inside of its animations. But this element, I feel like the tail would be perfect. If it had a different looking tail or a really long tail, just have it be really eccentric and large for its adult form. Make it different. I feel like that could be the big plain thing for the adult form, like play around with inside of its animations and make it seem really lively. They already changed it with the young form, with it having free bamboo-like tails, so I feel like... The they do have the room for experimentation with the adult form over the other features, so I'm really hopeful that they play into the eccentricness behind it and make it really different from the Elder, so these forms appear different. Otherwise, I feel like with the Blossom specifically, we just aren't going to feel that. Especially if this flower remains the same. But with that in mind, actually, if the flower did change, I think that would be cool. It could wither away before it comes into its Elder form, make it different, ginormous or something. Just <laughs> please play into it being different, otherwise I feel like it is going to be to say me the elder one. And with that, let's look at Browser's design for Adult Blossom. They have played into a much more middle stage design. This is what I feel like we are honestly going to get, honestly. And that's why I feel like we need to have some kind of distinguishing elements. As if I literally put the elder and young farm on screen right now, the elder and adult would end up looking so similar. Anyway, it, looking at Browser's design, it is really cute here. Out of all of the adult celestials, I would say this has an opportunity to be cute. They like the teen age vibeness though of it. So I'm not too sure if we get that, but if we did, MPG loves cuteness. <laughs> And along with Extravaganza, we're also going to be getting a rare wobbling for the month. As every single month we get one, and we only have four remaining now. Only four, it's going so quick. Anyway, I say that every single time it feels like now. We have Zucker, Dermot, Pixel, or Mulch this time. And seeing as though last year we had Rare Watcher, we 
they've already had their extravaganza theming. So I actually feel like they're going to play into the more Clover Spell and Cold Elemental theming of the month. Seeing as though we've got Glacier right now, which represents the element of cold, I feel like these two elements could be the ones that they play around with with this rare wobbling design. Especially seeing as we're, though we've already got Rare Watcher, they can't really do that again. So <laughs> I feel like Zucker, Dermy, or Mulch are as most likely contenders to do this. And actually, I'm going to do something a little bit unexpected. I feel like everyone would expect me to choose Mulch or Dermot for this, but I'm actually going with Zucker. I've been looking at the months ahead. Zucker seems like the most likely one to choose for this month. I also feel like Zucker could fit the green theme of Clover Spell. And it actually looks like Rouse agrees with me on this one. <laughs> because Rouse has put together a dragon-themed Zucker design. I love this explosive pit on the side of the top. It's just going boom. <laughs> Zucker explodes by boom. <laughs> That's my mind with the amount of content coming from Extravagance. <laughs> anyway, we've got some spikes on this design. Very scaly. I love the bracelet theming around it. It seems very Wobbling-esque to have that bracelet there based on fawns too. On the hands. Really unique that. I like the snout as well playing into this dragon theme. I love how you can see it playing into that green vibe with this. I feel like it plays so well into the fairy landscape that we have inside of this fairy video. The V2 are absolutely huge. Why do the feet look so huge? with the claws. I don't know, man. <laughs> Now, we're along with Zwart Rare Wobbling and everything else, man, we, we also have a Slash variant to talk about today, an epic ethereal. Because every single seasonal event, we have one arrive. So, who is it going to be this time? Well, we have Nubilob, Jellabilly, Arachulele, Kazelian, or Fung Prey. Them are the remaining epic ethereals that we have left. And honestly, I, I don't really have a clue which one it's going to be. It doesn't really play into the theme in the epic ethereal. They just kind of do whatever they want. And we like that because we need a bit of that randomness sometimes. But I I feel like, seeing as I got epic socks right on the tail, let's say, <laughs> tail. <laughs> I feel like I do have to have a little bit of a guess this time. So I feel like just based on which ones we've seen so far, Araculele or Nibulob seem like the most likely contenders to me. So we'll see. Is the epic ethereal fairy stride going to continue? Hopefully it's better than my rare wobbling streak. <laughs> I got rare screaming like right though last time, right? And as well inside of the game, a teaser we have been beheld to. An obscure one at that though, I will give it, is inside of the deep dive promotion saying Extravaganza is going to be arriving next. Next week, we can see inside of the background here, Blabbit. Now, you might think it's actually Blabbit, but if we zoom in on the photo and we compare it to the costume counterpart, you can actually see that this is not Blabbit. This is an entirely new costume because the little bit of egg on its ears is gone. So that means it's going to be a monster dressed up as Blabbit. And with Fog looking at it, I can only assume this could be a Fog costume. But who knows, man? It could be any kind of monster. So we'll have to see who dresses us up as Blabbit. We have a feast ember on his hands here with everyone dressing up as Goblin God. <laughs> Hopefully it looks cool because the costumes have been really cool lately. So I'm hoping they can mimic it in some kind of unique way. And now with the schedule. To. Let's try and piece it all together when everything might be coming next. Schedule is a bit up in arms this time. I'm a little bit more unsure about it, so I can work out some dates, but with some of them, it's definitely going to be a bit more up in air when it could be. So let's go over as ones which we do know first. On the 27th, we are going to be getting three costumes, a rare wobbling. That's a definite. And on the first, adult assume is going to be coming. But then we move on to his maybes. <laughs> so for Donna Fire, we have Blabbit and maybe Baby Bowhead, as I'm predicting. I feel like Easter, it's on Sunday on the 31st, so I don't feel like it can come any time other than on the 27th. But in saying that, we've not had any Dawn of Fire teaser, and every single seasonal for Dawn of Fire has been teased the week before. That leads me to believe that this could come a little later inside of the event. I don't see them wait until after Easter, though, so it, it makes me a bit curious when it's going to come. And then also on my maybe list, this would usually be a definite, but given what we have coming up, which... Wait, well, let's just get into that in a minute. <laughs> we have, on the third, the Epic Ethereal and Workshop Wave 4 coming. Now, why is this on my maybe list, you might be wondering? Workshop Wave 4, Workshop Waves, they always come the week after a seasonal event begins. That is the new status quo that we've been following since the waves have started, basically. But with what's coming up and my part two to Extravaganza, it, it leads me to be a bit unsure when this could be coming. <laughs> and just hold on there because there is actually a lot more 
Falco being for extravaganza. We'll get onto that in a minute. So overall, that's all of the schedule that we have now. So actually, let, let, let's skittle back now. Let's go back to that point where I was on about what's more is on the way for extravaganza. But what do I mean? Well, stay tuned for my part two to extravaganza. Now, this has been one of my longest theory videos already, but it does not end here. <laughs> we have got something very exciting on the way and unexpected. And I must leave right now to make that video because, oh my. God, new island on the way? <laughs> Please stay tuned for my part two because it looks like we have a new island on the way, guys. <laughs>